Council of the Arts is, and will remain in my opinion, one of the most important legacies of Dr. Jerome Wiesner. Council for the Arts at MIT was founded by Kay Stratton and Jerry Wiesner. Jerry was totally devoted to the arts, so that he picked up the little art committee and made it into the Council for the Arts. Jerry was a very strong anti-nuclear person. He was President Kennedy's science advisor and felt that institutions like MIT were turning out a lot of students and graduates of very high technical expertise who had a, um, a fairly large probability of destroying the world. And it was very important to get involved in things that have some sense of humanity. They look good. They found that MIT really had tremendous strength in the arts and that the arts perhaps were not getting the kind of resonance, the kind of visibility they should and ought to have because they thought of the arts as very much part of the mainstream of MIT, very much part of the core mission. When the council was created 40 years ago, it was uh, almost unique. There may have been one or two others of its kind. Where else but at MIT? We like going first. The view at that point, which is very strange looking back, is if we're gonna do art, let's buy some and put it out on the campus. In retrospect, it was brilliant. Public art collections on university campuses were ranked back in 2006, and MIT was in the top 10, and we love showing off this public art collection. The two most recent pieces acquired was Anish Kapoor's sculpture, which is over in the Stata Center, and Chai Kwok Jong's at the Sloan School. grants program was the most vital thing CAMET does. Over the course of the years, we've given over a thousand grants away, several million dollars. A lot of the money we give allows these people to get money from other people, probably two to three to one. These grants impacted my work in a way that I had to think about community. A, a mask that maybe These grants are meant to provide for interaction between students and faculty. Everything is almost exposed and it's just an exception. And this is where a, a lot of my work has evolved. The council is very important that it supports the arts here in many different aspects and carrying the word of art to the world and, and allowing us to develop and flourish in the Institute. So, thank you. Kamet's support of the MIT Museum and the List Visual Arts Center is another wonderful dimension. We give money to the BSO so that MIT students could get tickets there, either free or cheap money to the Garden and Museums and to the MFA. We give money every year to the Artists in Residence program. All of my interactions with the council have been student-focused. <laughs> We've had residencies where artists will come in and work with the ensembles. Joe Lovano was probably one of the greatest tenor saxophone soloists in jazz, and we were able to get him to come to MIT. And the students rose to the occasion. It was a wonderful example how, when they're in the presence of a great master, they just lift and lift and lift. The McDermott Award was founded by Margaret McDermott, the widow of Eugene McDermott, the founder of Texas Instruments. 
Mrs. McDermott decided after Jean died that she would like to give an award every year to artists that are mid-career. Let me confess, I love Santo Domingo. I love coming home to the guys in blazers trying to push little cups of Brugal into my hands. And it has attracted wonderful people. Juno Diaz, who we later recruited to our faculty. A prominent New Yorker writer, Pulitzer Prize winner. Diller and Scafidio, two architects who were unknown at the time they were brought to campus, later became world-class architects and are, among other things, the architects of the ICA. In all cases, the people who get the award spend some time at MIT with the students in some classes. It's like learning baseball from Babe Ruth. But don't be nervous. You know, four. The young conductor at the Los Angeles Philharmonic, Gustavo Dudamel, came here to receive the award. Most recently, Robert Lepage, the Canadian theater maestro, everything, he does it all. With experience, we, we've learned that we should not force connections. We let them, and eventually two or three things seems to go together, and we go, oh, there's a pattern there. And so the award has really evolved from a nice award to an important intermediate artist award to one of the highest level awards in the world. CAMET has always been an organization that socially bonds, that goes on trips, has wonderful art trips, getting into very exclusive private galleries. We've been to Prague, we've been to Berlin, we've been to Chicago. It's not at the cutting edge of art, it's at the cutting edge of people. I mean, you're meeting very smart people. Among the most important reasons one should have joined CAMET is you get closer to a truly great institution of higher learning. At MIT, we are very much oriented toward art at the intersection of science and technology to find out what can we do that will change the world. The best works that are developed in our classes here come from students who are brilliant people from mathematics, material science, or mechanical engineering. Art opens their view and possibilities beyond the problem-solving agenda. CAMET has been generous to MIT. It is the single most important sponsor of the arts. The Council for the Arts at MIT gives an additional voice to the arts. It's this kind of nourishment that the Council provides that really makes a difference in what we're able to do. It's about a concern about what the arts mean at MIT.